All right, how's everyone doing today? Good morning. Um, it's a great honor to be here at this conference. It's uh, you know, one of the largest and the best AI industry conferences out there. And I was walking around the floor earlier yesterday and saw a lot of different companies doing really interesting things. And I feel like this is just the beginning of where AI can take us. Um, and uh, what we're going to do for this presentation is kind of talk about Clearview, AI in general as well, um, and how it's having a positive impact on our society. So just raise of hands, who's heard of Clearview AI before? All right, cool. Um, so yeah, and then we'll do a demo of how it actually works in practice and kind of go through uh, some of these uh, cases in law enforcement where they've actually been able to uh, solve a lot of different crimes like financial fraud, money laundering, and human trafficking. Um, so what is Clearview for people who don't know about it? Uh, we're the most well-known facial recognition company um, in the Western world, and it's been written about a lot in the media, but fundamentally what we've done that's unique is kind of like make a Google for faces. So it's got over 20 billion images from the public internet, um, and it's used by law enforcement to help solve crime in an after-the-fact manner. Uh, and this is our mission as a company. Uh, we're very committed to reducing crime, fraud, and risk, and to make our community safer and commerce more secure. Um, and so again, like I mentioned before, it's a facial recognition search engine. Uh, it kind of like works like Google, but you put in photos instead of text. Uh, another misconception is it's not real-time surveillance. This is an after-the-fact investigative technology. So if someone in law enforcement cannot identify somebody who could be a victim or a perpetrator of a crime, uh, they turn to this search engine. And the other thing we'll get into now is um, how AI has really improved in terms of accuracy. So Clearview's algorithm has been ranked by NIST, the National Institute of Standards and Technology. And today, the uh, technology is just way beyond what a human could do uh, in terms of accuracy. And the bias around uh, different demographics is no longer an issue. And I think seeing is believing, so we'll get into that. But one thing we thought about, well, when I just browse the internet for too long, is like what's the history of facial recognition or fingerprints? So, you know, we've always used um, wanted photos in the past uh, and things like that, and fingerprints have been kind of like the staple of law enforcement. Um, but even if you go even further back into history, uh, people used fingerprints back in the Silk Road. This is like 500 BC to record who bought the thing. You drop off your money, buy something, and then pick it up later on. So I think once a human society gets to a certain size, you need you know, uh, ways for commerce to be secure and, and identification. And I think facial recognition is uh, really interesting um, now that it's gotten to be very accurate. And so a bit of like history of facial recognition in um, technology is, I think, 2010, 2011, Facebook did photo tagging, where you would tag your friends. So the accuracy of something like that has to be, if you have 1,000 friends, one out of 1,000, right? Um, the iPhone really came uh, and made people used to opening things with their faces uh, in 2017, but that's what they call one-to-one -one matching. Are these two people the same people or not? And um, what we were able to do in 2019 is really perfect the one out of a billion search. So it's much harder than what's come before. And so unless you have an identical twin, it's extremely accurate. Um, and so that's been the big breakthrough, and that's all come due to neural networks uh, because they've been able to learn from uh, lots of different examples. So um, if people don't know what NIST is, it's the National Institute of Standards and Technology. They rate uh, maybe 650 different algorithms, uh, and they do it on a rolling basis. You submit your binary, um, and then they tell you your results. And um, the, the head of NIST, uh, or someone who works there, says that, you know, um, that accuracy is no longer, uh, demographic bias is no longer a concern. It's very minimal. Some of the tests they have, there's one called the one to N. Can you pick this photo out of a lineup of 12 million? Uh, and we're at 99.85% for that. But you can imagine yourself leafing through 12 million photos and that being a, a really tough thing to do. 
And a lot of that is having a diversity of data. What we noticed with other facial recognition providers who came before is they would have data sets that were mainly celebrity photos or things you would find um, there. So you wouldn't have as many examples of different demographics like African Americans or South Asians and East Asians. And um, that's been like the kind of a problem with the technology. Before neural networks, AI would work, uh, it wouldn't be AI, it would actually measure the distance between the eyes and the nose and those kind of things, which makes it really hard if someone changes the angle of their face. Or if you're in law enforcement, you have grainy surveillance footage. And so uh, neural nets really took off uh, for facial recognition, and what we found is the more examples you have, the less bias you have and the, the more accuracy it gets. And I think now we're, at the level of really high accuracy, the big question is how are we going to deploy this technology? What kind of regulations do we want in place? Um, and, you know, what is kind of responsible use? So one example about how neural networks have gotten even better is in 2020 uh, with the coronavirus pandemic, we had some of our customers say, can your photo work when searching someone with a mask on? And at the time, it really didn't work for us. And so what we did is we took our training data, we photoshopped a mask onto 3% of our photos, uh, and we tried it out. And now, uh, to our surprise, it actually works with a mask on picking out of uh, 20 billion images. And we'll show you an example later. So we've been really surprised about how much more accurate it's gotten ourselves. So I'll go into a demo, and then we'll uh, touch on some other things as well. And these are real life use cases uh, from law enforcement. And um, let me just make the screen larger here. Everyone see that? Yeah, so we have an auditing feature for anyone who uses the technology in law enforcement. They have to put a case number or crime type into the, um, and a reason why they're searching. So here, we'll just do AI for demo. Um, and these uh, kind of uh, controls that we put in place allow agencies to really track what's going on. So it's really used for its, uh, stated purpose, if that makes any sense. Um, so once you've created an investigation, you can then uh, search photos. So basically picking a photo from your desktop, and this is uh, one of our favorite examples of uh, Homeland Security. So in 2019, they had a photo of this suspect. He was uh, abusing a six-year-old girl online, um, not online, abusing a six-year-old girl physically and selling it online, and his photo was in the abuse video for just a few seconds. So with one search in 2019, they were able, that's how quick it is, it's a live demo, to see these uh, results come back with his name and other things. So in 2019, our database was only three billion images, and so this was the only photo that came up here. Can you see how he's got the green uh, circle in the background? Uh, you can press the compare to see kind of like side by side how uh, accurate it is. Um, and from that, again, this is used in an after the fact way, they could click that link and follow it to Instagram. It was publicly posted actually in Vegas here. Um, and they were able to find other ways to identify him. He's now doing 35 years in jail and they could save that six year old girl. So what's amazing about it is, you know, they said over at Homeland Security, there's no way we would have found that guy otherwise. Today, with more images, you can see uh, different things that are there of him. But all these uh, search results are of the same um, person. So that's just how um, uh, quick and accurate it can be. Second example is masks. Um, this is something where someone in law enforcement, they do a lot of account takeovers where someone might steal your first name, last name, uh, social security number, right? Uh, and pretend to be you and, and cash out some money. So uh, from the surveillance footage, even now with a mask on, technology is able to run super quickly, um, and these are all the online links that match to it. So again, if you pressed compare side by side, I mean, we were really surprised that you could get to this level of accuracy there. And you can also, as an investigator, find more information that's on the public internet. Um, and then continue with your investigation. So investigators aren't gonna just make an arrest right away. They would say, okay, the crime has been done in, say, Florida or New York or wherever, um, and now I have a uh, reason to continue. Um, the other thing that's been really interesting is uh, cases of children. So this is just a sample photo of um, someone we have permission to use. 
So once they arrest some of these child abusers uh, in, in, um, in these cases, they have thousands of photos of children that have been abused on the perpetrator's hard drives and no way to identify them. Uh, so one federal agency said just in one year, they made 103 child rescues that they would have never made otherwise out of just one field office. And so this is just how accurate it's gotten, even with children's faces, where if that's a victim of a uh, child uh, a crime or abuse, uh, sexual abuse or anything like that, the parents often have no idea that it's happening. Um, so you can go and ID the parents. And if it's new abuse material that they haven't seen before, they're able to then go and make a um, child rescue. So uh, just in one unit doing 103 in a year, that's one every few days. The other thing that's interesting is it even, for this person, matches to their two-year-old baby photo. So when you use Clearview, you can see how there's a woman there uh, in the orange jacket. You can click on that face there if you want to search who that person is. But if you search for the baby photo, you get typically younger versions of the photo. So everything in the algorithm, you know, is, is um, and all the results are ranked purely by accuracy. So what's even more insane is that green circle there, where you press compare, uh, the, it's a blurry uh, version of the same uh, baby. So that's just how accurate it's become as a technology, um, surprising us a lot as well. And um, yeah, the other thing, oh, I'm missing it. Um, on this thing is you know sur surveillance uh, camera footage. So uh, this is something where a lot of law enforcement and previous facial recognition have issues with, also with uh, different um, ethnicities. So in a robbery case here, they're able to take a kind of a grainy photo, find social media photos, find arrest records, um, and that shows that it really works across all demographics. And what we've seen now is how this is something that's just not pro-law enforcement necessarily, but it's something that can help exonerate people. Or if you're in a situation like that where you have an uh, unknown photo and they cannot identify them, they're gonna send police around to different areas of the community knocking on doors trying to identify them. So I think it has a lot of positive impact on um, communities, not just you know, for law enforcement, but just for, for everyone that's out there. Um, and so, that's just kind of a demo. Here are some of the other things uh, we talk about. Financial fraud, actually one of our first cases we helped with where they could cover 35 million in fraud from about 19 people who were doing account takeovers. Um, capital riots was something where they could make hundreds of identifications right away. So when you think of the Boston Marathon bombing, that took two weeks to arrest the person. They arrested a lot of the wrong people. But with Clearview, uh, that the FBI and other agencies could ID them kind of instantly. And um, about five months ago, we gave free access, these are uh, old numbers, to Ukraine. Um, and they've been using it now. They've done 75,000 searches. Uh, there's seven agencies. Um, and what they use it for are at checkpoints to ID uh, people killed in action on the battlefield. Um, and it's been a great honor to help them with um, uh, their fight over there. So I think these kind of larger, High profile events have shown people the other side of the technology. Um, and yeah, and so just another thing that others here in the room might want to know about, since it's more of an industry conference, we do also have an API available for uh, commercial usage. So if, there's a, a per, if you're checking IDs online, if you're doing anything like that, you can use uh, some of our. Um, you can use our algorithm, and we have different use cases like banking, security, buy now, pay later companies, and others who are looking to enhance security. So I think as a technology has two kind of uses. One, it's helpful for uh, you know, law enforcement and government. But two, it can really empower people to protect uh, their own identity. So in a lot of these fraud cases, you know, we always think, what happens if you could prevent that um, from happening in the first place? Uh, the other thing that you know, we're very committed to as well as responsible usage and uh, regulation. I think that you know, all these industries that AI is touching uh, is gonna have a big impact, and I, I think a very positive impact. Just seeing all the other companies and what they're able to do, um, it's, 
going to be, I think we're really at the beginning of what AI is going to touch in terms of how it's going to help a lot of different businesses. So we've done things like requiring uh, intake forms. We're very active in talking to regulators, and that's something I you know, encourage every company to do, uh, especially for these uh, kind of things. And I think what we see in other countries like China uh, is a kind of a real-time deployment of this technology. And it's something that the West is different. You know, we're having after-the-fact investigations, uh, and I think that you can always have a technology, but it's always how do you integrate it and find the best and highest uh, purpose of it. And I think in the beginning, when you had automobiles, they had, there was no traffic lights, there were no lanes, there were no uh, kind of controls at all. But over time, you know, uh, we've adopted all that. And it's been, uh, I'd say, a net positive. And I think the same thing will happen for facial recognition, but also AI in general. And again, just going back to, you know, what our mission is about, to decrease crime and fraud. This is how much that, just in the US, that's estimated, depending on how you want to measure it. And so I think that, you know, this technology is going to have a very positive use case, but also now that it's gotten to be so accurate, um, you know, is how do we use it? And we're very committed to finding the best and highest purpose of uh, the technology. I think that's it.